What's going on everybody, James here from Artificial Entertainment and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And today we're going to be looking at the principles of spawning, so let's go ahead and dive in. So when it comes to spawning, there's two main things that you need. You need a location and as well as an item to spawn at that location. Now, there are also other things as well, such as rotation and the number of items that you're going to spawn or the number of instances of an item that you want to spawn. But ultimately, so long as you have an item to spawn and a location to spawn it at, those are the two main things that you need. Now, I'm going to be using an AI character as the spawnable object today, but if you're trying to use this process to be able to spawn actual objects in your game like weapons or potions or other things, you're going to use the same process, you're just going to switch out one node, which I will go over during the demonstration. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create our first spawner. Now, for me, I like creating spawners as actor blueprints. So we're going to right click, go to blueprint class, and then click on actor. We'll just name this spawn one. And we'll double click and open this up. Now, one thing I like to do with spawners is I like to add an arrow to these. And this allows me to give, you know, some sort of visual reference. So under the components tab, you can just go to add, type in arrow, and then just add one like this. This way, once you add your actual spawner into your game, you have a nice visual reference for where it is. And you can even color code these based off of if you have multiple different types of spawners. Now we're going to go ahead and pull up the event graph here and we're going to start coding in our first spawn and we're going to do all of this off of event begin play. Now you can do this any way that you want. If you want to use custom events and have it called in from your game mode or however you want to do it. But today we're just going to use event begin play as what spawns our actual AI into the world. Now for spawning, this is where, as I had said earlier, there's two different nodes. There's a first one that you, you would use to be able to spawn an actual object into the world. And there's another one that you would use to spawn an AI that has a behavior system now if you're just trying to spawn an item you would pull off of event begin play and then just type in spawn actor from class and you'll see this one right here under game and this will give you this where you can select any class that you want to spawn as well as the transform that you can split to get the location rotation and scale however today we are using an AI character so we're going to delete this out and we're going to instead spawn AI from class now, this is the only difference. Everything else that you're going to do is going to be the same. However, if you're spawning an AI, you want to use this one. If you're spawning a regular object into the game, you want to use the other node. Now, as you can see here, we have a pawn class just like the other one, but we also have a behavior tree asset that we can choose as well. So I'm going to go to the pawn class here and I'm going to choose my demo AI character. And for his behavior tree, I'm just going to select his main behavior tree. Now, one thing that's really important to keep in mind when spawning is the location value and specifically the Z value. This is something I actually did incorrectly for a long time without even realizing it. And what I mean by this, so if we want to have the AI spawn at just the location of where the spawn is, you would think you would just get actor location, right? And with the combined struct pin, you could just do this, right? Simple, easy, no problem. Well, actually there is a problem. So if I go and I put my spawner into the world here, you'll see his Z height location or its Z height location is zero. However, if I go to my AI and pull out his blueprint and put him into the world, you're going to see his Z height is actually 88, which means that if I spawn him in at zero, it's actually going to be a chance that he'll just fall through the floor. It actually won't spawn in correctly. So what we want to do is make sure that we set this Z value to 88 and then just give it the location for the X and Y for whatever our spawner's location or get actor location is. So we can just right click to split this struct pin. We can also right click to split the get actor struct pin here. And we're just going to hook up the X and the Y, but the Z location, we're going to set to 88. So this way it's going to spawn it at a proper height. Now from here, we can just compile and save. We'll minimize this really quickly and also delete the AI that I put into the world. And if I go ahead and I just hit play, you'll see that we have one AI spawned into the world. So it has done exactly what we asked it to do. We said spawn one AI and it spawned it at the location right here where our spawner is. And as you can see, that arrow does make a really nice visual for whenever looking for that spawner. So let's talk about a little bit if you want to randomize that location. Make it so that way, you know, it doesn't just spawn in one location. You want to spread the spawn out a little bit and make it so you can spawn in multiple points. Just randomize. Well, there's an easy way to do this as well. If we unhook the X and the Y here and then recombine the struct pin for get actor location, we're going to leave the struct pin um, split on the actor of class spawn, but we're going to right click and get random. And we want to get random point in navigatable radius, put the return value of get actor location into the origin 
and just set the radius to something high like 1200. And now this is where we're going to go random location, split the struct pin, and we're going to hook up the X and the Y into here, leaving that Z location again, just kind of at 88 because that's our proper Z height. So now if I compile and save and just kind of bring this down a little bit and then hit play, you'll see he actually spawned over here. Even though our spawner is over here, he spawned over here and I can hit play again. Do the same thing. He spawned way over there. So now he's picking a random point within 1200 units of our get actor location and then just choosing a new X and Y value. So this way it gets a random location on our actual floor. So now let's talk about random rotation. What if you wanted to give a randomized rotation as well? What would you do for this? Well, actually very easy. There's actually a node in Unreal Engine for this. So all we have to do is just right click and go random rotator. You're going to see right here, random rotator. And we can right click on the return value and split this because we only want the yaw because the yaw is technically the facing rotation, right? So that's all we want to do is give him a different facing rotation. So we want to split the struct pin on the spawn as well and then just hook up the yaw, leaving the roll in the pitch at zero. Now, if we compile and save and I'll move my player spawn inwards because it's going to be hard to see with him kind of actually moving around. But you'll see he just spawned kind of facing more towards the middle here. And if I hit play again, this time he spawned facing that wall. You know, this time he spawned facing that way. So each time he's getting a different facing direction and a different spawn location. So now that we have this, what if we wanted to do this, but we wanted to spawn like five or six different AI into the game? Well, again, very easy one node addition. Off of npm play, you can actually just pull off of the execution pin here and we're going to do for loop. Now we don't want the for each loop or the for loop with break. We just want the for loop, standard for loop, right? Like here, just like this. Now we're gonna set the first index to one and the last index we're gonna set to five. Now what this will do is this will actually spawn in six AI, technically speaking. Um, but even though you're setting the last index to five, it's gonna spawn in six. So that's just something to think about. But if you don't set the first index to one, it'll spawn less than. So if you set it to one, it'll spawn at least one greater or it could be one less if you set it to zero. For some reason, no matter what you do, the first and last index are never actually going to be accurate. There's going to be some sort of like calculation you're going to have to put into this. I don't know why, but this is the only way that I've found that actually makes some sort of sense and doesn't come back as kind of buggy. But if I go ahead and minimize this now, and if I just hit play, you'll see that we now have one, two, three... Let's see, where's the rest of them? Ah, four, five over there. So this time it did spawn in five, actually, it looks like. Sometimes it does spawn in six. Um, I just actually recording this yesterday, and it spawned in six doing the exact same system. So this is where it, it, it gets a little weird sometimes, but this is how you're going to be able to spawn in multiple. Um, I'm working on a better system to make it so that way you can actually get the exact number constantly with control, but there's still some bugs within the engine, unfortunately. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is just basically if you wanted to give something like a specific location or rotation, how would you go about that? Well, we'll take out the for loop here and we'll take out the get random point and off event begin play, we'll just pull off. We'll do a simple get actor of class. Now, what you can do from here is just return value, get actor location and split the struct pin and then do the X and Y of this actor location. Now, something to bear in mind, though, is that this would only be necessary if you're trying to spawn like a merchant at a store and you're having the spawn point. So the actor location, if we go to the viewport here, just like the third person character, or actually we'll go to the spawn point, the actual what it references as the actor location is this icon here. So wherever this is in the world, that's what it's going to be referencing as the location. I can move this arrow way over here just like this but it'll still reference this as the actual actor location it doesn't matter what i do that is the actor location so that's something to keep in mind so whenever you place like your shops and stuff if you place your shop with that at that location in mind for where you want your ai to spawn then you can use this code very easily well that's really it for today's video guys you know that's really it uh spawning is just all about getting a location maybe setting a rotation if you want and that location and rotation can be specified or randomized depending on what you need and you can spawn as many as you want you can even create location structs and a whole bunch of crazy stuff to be able to make your spawning truly dynamic um it's it's really great what you can do 
Now, I'm going to be doing a video here soon about, you know, enums and structs and data tables, all that good stuff. There's some really, really cool stuff that I've been playing around with. So I really want to show you guys that. Um, but also before that, there should also be a video about the mapping variable type, which is also really, really cool. So if you guys haven't checked that out, please go and check that out. Mapping variable types are awesome for just kind of storing information. That's all for another video. So I'm going to close out today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And as always, stay animated.